Hey guys and welcome back. It is Undying OGC here with Original Gaming Culture. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a spotlight of a hero. This hero is Cleo. If you do anything with PvP, I highly recommend that you consider getting Cleo. Um, Cleo is a staple for PvP and usually has either the first skill you cast in PvP or the second or third. You can get Cleo out of uh, the chest. So you do not need to buy Cleo, just save up um, the hero tokens and you can get Cleo. So let's take a quick peek at Cleo and what Cleo uh, can do. Cleo is a mage, so she benefits from all of the mage research. As far as gearing Cleo, um, if you do not have a full stage set that drops from the dragon, uh, Pretty much that set makes it so all of your heroes get the Rod of Justice um, benefit. If, if you do not have that set, go with the Rod of Justice. You will want to uh, reduce her cooldown right at the beginning. If you do have the Sage set, then you can go with the, um, a, a more uh, stat heavy um, staff if you wanted. But if you do not have the Dragon set for the Sage completed, Go with uh, a Rod of Justice. Cleo's Mage set will uh, make it so that her ability cooldowns are reduced by one second. It doesn't stack with anything else. So again, if you have the Sage set, this is really subpar. I use it just because it gives a bunch of stats. Her Dragon set will make it so that um, when she uh, takes a bunch of damage and she's about to die, She'll have a huge damage mitigation for five seconds. When it comes to accessories, feel free to use whatever accessories for PvP will benefit Cleo the most. If you were going for max void damage, then you would want to consider stuff that adds a bunch of magic to her. Cleo does have a couple, um, I don't think I have any to show you guys. Uh, Cleo does have a couple of, uh, oh I do. A couple of items that will increase uh, certain skills, feel free to roll with it. This plus one for Tomb, tomb of Pain, I'll show you that. She also has uh, another one. And for an artifact, um, I highly recommend putting the Codex on her. Once the Codex is 5 star, Cleo can actually do some uh, decent damage. Uh, mostly to ranged units that have low HP. So that could look like uh, enemy Dwarf Blasters, uh, Human Archers, Slif Archers. When it comes to anything that has a lot of HP, um, it's not as noticeable. But nonetheless, it is some damage. When it comes to setting Cleo up in order to maximize your gold cap, again, whatever gives the most command in the res respective slots, you'll still want to go with the uh, Mantle of Wisdom. Uh, Galactic Scepters work pretty well, and then uh, the standard um, Hand of Wisdom. So you can go with the accessory that gives plus one to magic resistance, that is through Elena. Uh, but there's not a big point in crafting a bunch of those to get a, a bunch of flawless ones. Um, Hand of Wisdoms are kind of universal, you can use them on any anybody. One last thing to note with Cleo, when it comes to weapons, she can equip the Magister's Rod. This will give her an increase of 20% when it comes to experience. This works with experience cards. Please, if you ever level up a mage or anything like that, or a sage, please use this weapon. It will save you 20% of uh, your EXP cards. It, it helps a lot. When it comes to Cleo's abilities, uh, her first one is... Uh, Arc Arcane Codex, she has a 35% chance of releasing a Dark Orb that, that deals 100% damage uh, or 100 damage to enemy units. Magic increases the damage, so does the level. Increasing, um, increasing this skill will just increase the uh, base damage that she does. I, I, I don't think that's necessary. You do want one point in this. I, I will show you why. But first, Let's talk about the Book of Eclipse. So after Cleo releases three Dark Orbs, which the Dark Orbs come out of her Arcane Codex, so Cleo needs to do auto attacks. Once she releases three Dark Orbs, 
everything goes dark in, in the game, and uh, apparently humanoid units deal reduced damage during that time. This means that if you are playing as a human, a dwarf uh, that's using blasters and snipers, um, or rock, and you don't want this skill, you're going to reduce the damage of your own troops. If you are playing uh, as Slyph with no humanoids, uh, a mech tank setup for Dwarf, or you're playing Lich, any variety of Lich, then you'll probably want this skill pretty high leveled uh, simply because it will reduce the damage coming from your opponents. Next, Cleo has Tomb of Pain. Tomb of Pain, uh, uh, she can cast the, the skill, it does a little bit of damage. I've never really used this too much. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd just skip over this one altogether. Tomb of Wisdom, however, increases Cleo's uh, magic. It's, it's kind of like um, the mastery for Avril, where it, it uh, increases the, the magic. Uh, this just um, increases Cleo's magic for level 7 is by 28, uh, level 8 it would be 36, etc. Uh, it's good for extra points. Tomb of Redemption. If you are playing as an undead uh, lich, you will want to use this because after the battle, any undead troops that die in the middle of the eclipse where everything goes dark, Cleo's second skill that we went over, um, they have a chance of uh, being uh, resurrected after the battle is over and they won't be permanent losses. So this is a uh, a good skill, it has a niche, it's only for undead, uh, uh, I'm sorry, only for Lich if you're playing undead. Finally, we have Tomb of Creation, aka Black Hole. Um, I'll probably end up just calling it Black Hole from here on out because Tomb of Creation, it sounds awesome, but uh, it, it's just a black hole. It's a giant black hole. Pretty much, um, it will deal some, some damage. However, the... Uh, big point of it is the crowd control that it offers. It is a ginormous crowd control uh, skill and it will stop all the units uh, for seven seconds. Um, it will not affect uh, things like spiders, turtles, tree fathers, any of the like massive units it's not going to affect. It also will not affect heroes. But if a spider puts out little spiderlings, it will affect the spiderlings. It will affect um, mechs, uh, humans, rockins, it, 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 everything else. It's, it's a huge skill. So I do put the codex on Cleo uh, for her black hole. It will give her 30% more magic damage and 45% more um, magic damage as well because her black hole comes out of the, um, uh, it's an ability that uses mana. You can further increase her, her damage if you max out tier, oh, it is not tier six. Which, uh, which one is it? Aha, uh -huh, tier seven. If you max out tier seven and tier 10 under the mage research, you can uh, further increase Cleo's damage by a, a pretty decent amount. So under tier seven, uh, the tier 7 um, really doesn't do anything for the individual levels, but once you make it into 40 and you fully unlock it, it will increase uh, their damage by 50% during the first 30 seconds. Most of the time, if you have Cleo and you're going to use Cleo, it's going to be uh, right at the beginning of the battle. Usually you'll open up either with a Vega heal, Jax doing Spray and Pray, or Cleo. If, uh, if it is Cleo, then you're going to get this bonus during, because it will be during the first 30 seconds. It adds on top of everything from the Codex. Um, and the one last one that will really benefit her magic damage is um, her tier 10, just the normal level up stages. It will, uh, every time an enemy is uh, dealt, dealt damage by magic, it will reduce um, their magic resistance. So if people are running talk and uh, Elena at the same time, which everybody should be doing in PvP, enemies will have a bunch of um, magic resistance, which will lower Cleo's damage. 
along with um, depending who wins the magic stat. I still don't think it's worth it to go all out to try and win the magic stat for PvP, but anything you can do to get a little bit of extra damage can be beneficial. So all of that adds up. So one last time, because I'm going to go over this in, in a second with, with Avalon. Under her first skill, Arcane, Arcane Codex, 35% chance of Cleo shooting out an orb. Once um, Cleo shoots out three orbs, Book of Eclipse will turn everything dark and will reduce damage from, from humanoids. So let's go, uh, let's go check, check this out a little bit. Let's first see what Cleo's um, black hole can do, if it can even uh, kill off the, these bronze. So we get a bunch of bronze here. This, this circle right here is the cast spot. You'll actually see the size. It will affect a lot more people than just that. And the black hole actually does a uh, decent damage, but these are bronze level 10 troops. So let's, uh, let, let's try something a little bit tougher. These are level 15 silvers. And see if this does any decent damage. And it does some decent damage. It's not enough where the game is, is going to be decided through um, your Cleo damage. If, if that happens, that, that, that's pretty cool. But realistically, it's probably not going to work that way. So for, for this setup, we are going to run with um, Cleo and Avalon once more. All right, so Cleo runs out, she does one orb and two orbs. She just needs one more orb, one more orb, one more orb. She's got a 35% chance. Cleo, you're going to die. There we go. So now that the screen has gone completely uh, dark, that means that um, it is the Book of Eclipse. All humanoids deal reduced damage. Uh, Cleo is still going to die uh, just, just because her health is so low. But that is what the Book of uh, Eclipse looks like. So that, that is Cleo in, in a nutshell. Um, it, if you are running her with um, Lich and or um, uh, Slyph or in a mech tank, put her near Avalon so she can cast uh, Book of Eclipse as fast as possible. As you can see, it, it really depends on uh, the, the percent chances and the luck. Uh, realistically, she has a one out of three chance uh, to cast an orb. She needs to cast three of them, so it's going to take her nine auto attacks on average to actually cast the orb. Uh, I'm sorry, to cast the Book of Eclipse. So that, that is Cleo. One final thing. One final thing. Uh, to address a question that, that I got from somebody, which was, where do I put the um, where do I put the Clio black hole? Well, I am going to show you where you put the the Clio black hole. Look at all these troops that I have. I have like nothing. All right. Actually, that's not going to work for the example. This will work for the example. All right, so hypothetically say that this Avalon is the enemy and all of those units are enemy units. And this is us and this is our Cleo. You generally wanna drop your Cleo black hole immediately on top of the enemy Avalon and the units that are around him. The reason for that is the first, I think it's like eight seconds of the battle, Avalon will give all of the troops near him a giant boost in attack speed and movement speed. So to counteract that, if you can do the Cleo black hole on them, she can do pretty fast, looks like that, and then you just drop it right, right on Avalon and it will affect all of those troops. Um, since this is myself, it's not going to really work, but that, that's how you would find placement in PvP for your, your black hole. Of course, like anything else, there, there's exceptions and there's different situations where you might not want to do that and it could be better in a different spot. But if you do this to the enemy and the enemy does not do this to you, then there's going to be a, a giant difference overall in um, 
the the amount of damage that comes out from the the troops in the first eight seconds so we can just throw it down there and watch all of these units just die and then there we have it that that, that is clear ladies and gentlemen so please uh like subscribe to the channel um there is a video of mine floating around right now where you have a chance to win a gift card go check that out figure out how, how to do that um, i'm not not even going to tell you the name of the video uh, just go through all the videos on, on the channel it, it will pop up and you will be able to um, apply to to win a uh, a gift card you can use it however you like all right guys like subscribe enjoy have a safe day in nor